Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Mobile UX Podcast. My name is Aditya Patel, and today we're going to be having a conversation with Philip from View Storefront, who he is the tech lead of at View, one of the tech leads at View Storefront, and he is currently um, really in charge of VSF One. Uh, we want. I wanted to really talk to him mainly about state management in View Storefront and in general, how people are managing page speeds and stuff like that within VSF1. Also, we're going to be talking briefly about what they're doing in VSF Next, which is a great project they're working on as an evolution of VSF1. All right, uh, let's jump right into the episode and hope you guys enjoy. All right, so, Philip, it's awesome to have you on the podcast. Uh, I guess we can just get right into what we want to talk about today, which is VueX and View Storefront. So why don't we start with an introduction of you? So what do you do at View Storefront? What's going on with that? Okay, so at first, hello, everyone. I'm Filip Jondrasik. Uh, I'm leading the View Storefront 1 project, and sometimes I'm working on View Storefront Next. In terms, in terms of View Storefront 1, uh, I mostly focus on getting better performance, stability, writing docs, and articles. New features are not my priority for now. Also, during every workday, I'm trying to spend at least one hour helping the community on Slack and our forum. It was about View Storefront. So how did you get involved with View Storefront? Did you start from like the community or did you get directly like start from the company? What's up with that? Yeah, uh, I have joined New Fantastic, an agency which creates online shops using View Storefront uh, one. So I started from the company. Uh, my tech stack mm-hmm. ma- matched the requirements perfectly. As I'm really ambitious person, I wanted to solve the hardest issues. That's how I could uh, learn so much about the whole ecosystem of Vista Front One. Right. Uh, is there just as um, did you have anything like specifically that you really liked about View Storefront when you worked on it, like outside of View Storefront before you were part of the company? I I always liked the idea of a single page application. Uh, you know, mm-hmm. the user experience is truly amazing. And I, yeah. when I was younger, I was wondering why no one creates, you know, e-commerce shops on uh, with single page applications. Can we uh, some, right. some, somehow uh, work around with this uh, SSR problem? Right. So obviously working in View Storefront, a big part of that is open source. So how, what, what's your history been with, View Store, with open source? Have you enjoyed it? Do you, what's your opinions about open source and working in open source? Mm, definitely, I like it. I wish I discovered it <laughs> when I was younger. I think feedback from uh, developers has a huge positive impact on uh, development as a programmer. By contributing mm-hmm. to the open source project, uh, you can get uh, it for free. Besides that, you could meet interesting people or even get a job offer. Right. In my opinion, this is also a really valuable uh, thing to mention at the interview. So speaking about contributing in open source, would you say there's anything about contributing that's often overlooked or people kind of don't give it as much credit as they should? <laughs> well, that the, there is thing with change log. Uh, developers tend to be <laughs> focused on fi- uh, feature and polishing everything around it. Uh, then maintainer just say, great, but please update change log. It's, it's, it's really funny in my opinion. Uh, other fields, and uh, to be to be more serious, uh, are detailed description of PR, uh, writing tests, and making uh, manual uh, tests, and obviously mm-hmm. writing docs. Uh, it is you know important to always explain what PR exactly does. You should not force maintainer to guess. Mm. Uh, about other things, uh, as I said, you are getting free feedback, so uh, it might be a good idea. Uh, to write unit tests because uh, some projects required, uh, you know, some projects require it, some um, projects does not. But uh, I think mm-hmm. many developers have problems with mastering unit tests, so it could be a, a really good idea to uh, overcome this this problem uh, this way. Uh, what 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 I was talking more? Uh, I think it was about docs. So uh, yeah, it is doc, docs are not necessarily required. Uh, however, you should uh, write it if you create a new feature or modifi- modifying some existing behavior. Uh, uh, in my opinion, there is a simple rule uh, with uh, about writing code and docs. Let's imagine you suddenly have to wake up at first a.m. 
and you have to make changes in your code. Your skill level is really reduced because of the situation, but if you have written elegant code and document, you should be able to handle it. That's very true. Especially with other people trying to handle your code, documents are really good. Um, you also mentioned something about... Uh, yeah, I, want, I just wanted ahead, to say ahead. if it's really simple and well documented, everyone should, uh, should be able to handle it, even if uh, without uh, help of, uh, from the author, right? Right, I understand. That makes sense. Um, so let's get into the topic of the technical topic we wanted to talk about today, which is Vuex within Vue Storefront. So that's state management. There's a lot of other great ways that it facilitates um, coding and building um, App, like building out features within the application. So could you like, I know, but I also know when we pick up a project from like other people's projects, we have this internally and I know it must happen in open source where people dive in and don't look at what's already been built within the system and instead they go out and try to re reinvent the wheel for themselves for their own project. So does that happen anywhere within Vue Storefront and Vue X? Yes, totally. I see people tend to write logic uh for a fix for things from scratch uh, when it is totally bad approach because we have already written uh, most of the logic uh, developers might need. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it is all about reusing. Mm. I could give you a few examples of, of mm, Vuex actions or helpers that you could reuse. What do you think about it? Yeah, that'd be great. So, uh, for example, instead of, instead of writing uh, your own query to Elasticsearch, uh, you mm -hmm. could use Vuex um, product, uh, find products action, or in older version, it was called uh, product uh, list action. It takes care of things you probably do not know even when uh, you are starting a jar journey with Vue Storefront, like uh, calculating taxes, populating uh, cash tax, and things like that. I think mm -hmm. not every Vue Storefront developer is conscious about that. Uh, it also registers uh, mappings for uh, dynamic URL uh, dispatchers module, dispatcher module. Okay. So uh, yeah, it, 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 if you somehow omit it, you might uh, have some problems. But uh, you know, you you will figure out it a few months later when, when probably when uh, some client have problems with that because it is really hard to um, yeah. To figure out, right? And I guess should people? I know Vue Storefront was originally built to work great with Magento out of the box. So people who are using these predefined kind of services and actions and Vuex capabilities, should they be worried about compatibility with their own if they're not using Magento? The basic idea uh, in Vue Storefront, as you said, was to uh, be platform agnostic. But we we are, to be honest, we are more focused on. Uh, integration with Magento 1 and Ma Magento 2. Um, mm -hmm. However, uh, the thing is we have a Vue Storefront API, with, which is our uh, Node.js middleware. And uh, here we are trying to mapping uh, data from, from, um, from external sor sources to be kind of agnostic. So uh, I would say that 90% of utility function would work. However, uh, you know, in Magento we have Bundle, pro bundle products, configurable, simple, virtual group, uh, and uh, you know you might you might use some e-commerce system which uh, do not have uh, exactly same uh, type of products. So in uh, this moment, there might be a, some some kind of problem with uh, with using already existing logic. However, uh, I think it could in this case if you see some something in throwing error because you you are using some um, some unusual uh, e-commerce solution. Uh, you could just uh, copy paste the original function and customize it for you. Uh, still not writing mm -hmm. from scratch, you know, because we uh, we we try to uh, write a code which is really really easy to read. So if it is it, if it is uh, really easy to read, it is really easy to understand. And if so, you should be able to. Customize, customize it pretty easily without uh, without need uh, to have uh, big knowledge about the whole ecosystem. So when we pull a Vuex state out of uh, SSR output server-side rendered, uh, it, it tends to be 
pretty large. So is there like stuff we can do with Vuex and Vue Storefront to reduce the size of that and make sure our performance doesn't take a hit? Yeah, uh, I think it's, it, it is really a good question because indeed it could be pretty, pretty large. Uh, so in your PWAs config under SSL property, we have uh, a few properties for re uh, re reducing size of this uh, initial object. Uh, we could uh, chop parts which are useless for the first load. Uh, the fields are called uh, lazy hydrate 4 and initial state filter. They, the, the, mm -hmm. they are ar arise uh, are, uh, and they are uh, used to determ determine um, which objects remove. Uh, you, you obviously there is also option to use initial state filter for um, enabling the whole whole behavior. So uh, this is must have. Uh, so uh, to be more precise about this this, this whole feature, uh, we have to keep in mind that uh, it is a good idea to fetch uh, server side as little as possible. Uh, right, totally because uh, you know. Uh, we have to move then uh, things from server side to client side, and uh, we are doing it by uh, putting uh, object in in uh, in our uh, in source of our page. So uh, every user has to has to you know uh, fetch it, and uh, we can get worse results with a time to first byte because of that. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, you know, on the server, fetch only uh, things which are essential for render DOM, but for some interactions and 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 more things, uh, you could uh, you could fetch rest on the client side. I think uh, other other cool thing is because you know uh, fetching client side might end up in situation when. Uh, you are entering uh, some uh, some shop and uh, suddenly you, you have uh, like um, i don't know 30 uh, requests uh, for for addi additional resources it is mm -hmm. also not not so cool so uh, recently tomek kostuch uh, which is a vjs developer uh, created really really cool, cool pr which uh, add, which adds uh, some mixing which uh, is able to run function uh, when uh, some component or uh, element in dom is visible so uh, if it is visible or it is almost visible then we are mm -hmm. uh, fetching uh, rest of the data you know not everything right. at first load but uh, later when it is almost visible so we can uh, delay uh, really really many requests if if for example for uh, a big landing page it could uh, really improve uh, Google page speed. I know um, this has, I wonder if this has something to do with, uh, the, I don't, you, may, you might know about this. There's this Google metric for measuring page speed that isn't full page load, but main content page load. It, I don't, there's like a short acronym for it too. But do you think this has something, this can like directly help businesses when they implement this correctly by not loading what they don't need to at first initial load to uh, get themselves boosted in that ranking? Uh, well, it it helps, but it is one of of ideas. Uh, you know that, that there are really, really, really many things we should apply to um, boost mm -hmm. our Vista Front One up as as much as possible. Uh, and mm -hmm. it is uh, one of this of these tips. So, um, especially on initial page load time, when people land on your home page or whatever first link they take from the Google search results. Uh, PWAs notoriously have slow initial page load time, but every page after that is super fast. So what can we do to manage those page load times? So uh, the biggest benefit of our solution is that we do not have to fetch everything client signed because um, in uh, Vista Front One, we have, uh, we have SSR uh, cache, uh, mm -hmm. so we, which uh, will always speed up the first load because uh, at first, server obviously has to fetch some data, but each uh, each continuous request will come straightly from the uh, cache. I, in this example, mm -hmm. uh, we, by, by default, it will be Redis cache. So, you know, it, it won't be like uh, ask a node server, do some stuff. It will be like just uh, ask Redis, Redis response, and that's all. So uh, time to first byte would be 
pretty fast, but uh, the other problem is that uh, on the on the uh, response of, uh, which we got from the server, we still have uh, to um, we we still have to hydrate this uh, this SSH output. So uh, you know, hydration is process of uh, making your app reactive uh, on front end uh, when it is uh, server side rendered, and this process uh, mm -hmm. can be pretty demanding. But uh, we have a library uh, called View Lazy Hydration, which allows us to uh, delay hydration of some parts of your website uh, to to other moments, like when it is visible or when browser is in idle stance. So uh, it is. Um, uh, I I mean that this View Lazy Hydration could be another tip to boost your uh, website. So. Apart from lazy hydration, is there anything else that we can be doing with Vuex specifically to make sure our page load times and in general performance stays uh, uh, high and good? Yeah, definitely. Uh, you know, um, it is. It, it might be a good idea to lazy load some uh, Vuex modules. Uh, for that, you might need to update your uh, Vuex version to one which has uh, has module. A method so you will be able to uh, check whether a uh, model is already loaded or not if not you you, you can lazy load it and uh, if not you can lazy load it and uh, 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 and just uh, register uh, but you know before creating a new vuex module it is a good idea to think uh, whether it should be uh, only one module or maybe a few modules whether we need a bunch of actions uh, which will be loaded instantly, or maybe we could uh, mm -hmm. use some helpers to defer loading of uh, of some unused JavaScript. You have to think where uh, you will need certain parts. Without that, you made up uh, with many kilobytes of unused JavaScript code, which you cannot get rid of uh, without breaking changes. When you say many kilobytes, like how many kilobytes are we really talking like how much do you think that's really going to change page performance like that seems very trivial to me for real it depends uh, what module it uh, is it uh, for example uh, modules like uh, catalog catalog next and cart uh, are a huge part of the whole app.js bundle uh, uh, you know in the final so uh, mm -hmm. I think m maybe it, it is kind of uh, it might be kind of trivial because uh, l let's imagine you will uh, save like uh, I don't know four kilobytes in on on a module. However, you know th there is a moment when each kilobyte uh, counts, right? I guess they add up when you do them from multiple sides. They eventually start adding up, and that creates that huge difference. Mm -hmm. And let's you know let, let's imagine there is a lot of modules. If you think about them before before creating and done everything well, uh, mm -hmm. it, it is possible instead of you know uh, loading uh, twenty modules on on every on every view, you 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 could somehow lazy load them uh, and uh, require only on um, certain views. Yeah, so maybe it goes down to like five or ten, maybe. And so you've already saved like half the size of your load. So having these extra bits of JavaScript and code, does that like do anything with the way your site is ranked by Google or anything? Um, you know, to be honest, if you, um, if you uh, will apply uh, every good practice on your uh, Vistafront 1 PWA, you might end up in situation when the, there is only one... Uh, one warning, one last warning from the Google page speed, which sa says that uh, get rid of unused JavaScript, and it will uh, mm -hmm. and it will tell you about app.js and vendor.js. Uh, I think we've, uh, unless you want to, so you have anything, any last few words or statements you want to slide in. Um, I've we've really broken down how we're using Vuex within Vue Storefront to do like we're managing speed, what kind of functionalities we're offering. So I'd be interested to talk to you about how Vuex state management is evolving within Vue VSF next. Yeah. Uh, so does that sound good? 
Yeah, yeah, t totally. Uh, but uh, you know, you you can forget about Vuex in VS Vista Fraud next. Uh, we decided to use only the composition API, so no more global state, only local states kept mm -hmm. uh, inside reactive properties. I mean, for example, re uh, refs. Uh, sometimes we lift up refs uh, if we need it, and you mm -hmm. know, no no Vuex at all, so we can uh, benefit from tree shaking and stuff like that. Right. Actually, you know what? Last night to pre prepare for this podcast, I hadn't really seen much about Composition API. But co looking at Composition API, I was reading actually Philip. Oh, I'm going to butcher his last name, but the other Philip, Philip R. Um, I, I actually came across his article about using um, Composition API in VSF Next. And it was this great article about how you guys are using it for your own, basically built out your own small VUX or like state management basically that fits your needs specifically. Is that right? Uh, exactly, exactly. We uh, we have uh, composables for each part, like checkout, card, you know. Um, the pattern mm -hmm. is to call them like use card, use checkout and something like that. Um, to be honest, it is cool. really a pleasure to use it um, in compared to Vuex. I'm a big fan of Vistor Front One, but I'm really I'm really excited excited about the Vistor Front Next because it will be a game changer. So we're we're all really excited about it. Well, I know we're moving from just plain vanilla Vue uh, JS to we're going to you guys are going to Nux JS, right? With VSF Next. So what's so what are some cool things you guys are getting to leverage by using Nux JS? Yeah. So well, well uh, Nux offers us many amazing features, which we would be forced to write from scratch. For example, modules, plugins, templating, optimization stuff, reference sources, and many, many, many more. Um, you could see a few of them in View Storefront 1, which we uh, created from scratch. But, uh, you know, as a uh, Nux team is developing this, this and, uh, and Nux team is doing his job uh, really, really well, I think there is no uh, there is no need to create tools from our side. We can benefit by using these tools uh, and focus uh, on build uh, an amazing framework, not tools. So you mentioned this thing about um, you can only use certain you can you have this opportunity to only use certain parts of Vue Next in your Nuxt app if you want to. So is there anything you're super excited about? People are going to use as standalone. Mm, yeah, there are a few parts. Uh, I think people might be interested in using uh, CMS integration and easily build modern blocks with them. So, you know, mm -hmm. uh, side effect of our work is uh, creating a Nuxt library to, uh, you know, to, to for, for, for uh, I think, creating a Nuxt library for uh, each well-known headless CMS, right? So uh, then someone which is uh, creating portfolio or, or modern block for a client, he could just uh, use Next and some Prismic, Ampliance, and uh, or, or stuff uh, like that, and uh, you know, I I think so many people will will uh, want to use it. So you, th mm. yeah, go ahead. Okay, so uh, I wanted to also mention about another thing, which is caching module, uh, which will be mm -hmm. uh, probably so useful for the whole Next.js community. When I've uh, been looking for something like that, I found Next SSR cache module. But it do not even has a cache tax support, which is not really cool for me. Uh, we wanted to build something bigger. Interesting. So uh, you mentioned people are going to be using your CMS for their own blogs. Like, just to be clear, you're not talking about how e-commerce pages, like e-commerce sites, have like blogs within them for SEO. You mean like straight up people who do dedicated blogs are going to be able to use VSF Next CMS modules to run their blog site? Is that what you mean? Yeah, well, so uh, we wanted to, uh, because obviously uh, when someone has uh, some online shops, he probably want to put content uh, uh, inside. So yep. headless CMS yep. is really, really good solution for that. Uh, mm -hmm. We created mm -hmm. modules to, uh, in purpose of, uh, uh, of, of uh, putting CMS content inside of our e-commerce shops. Ha however, it is that sc scalable. Uh, it could be easily used uh, without e-commerce. So you could just, uh, you know, bring this headless CMS module and use it uh, with your next app. 
you know, I think that's all the questions I really had from my side. If there's anything else you want to like give the audience in terms of Nuxt or VSF Next or VSF One, now's the time before we close out. Well, to be honest, I don't think I have anything more. Okay, sure. So I know we have uh, a few more episodes in mind that I'd love to do with you. We talked about doing a routing episode, uh, which is going to be interesting. And then we, I think reading uh, while preparing for this uh, episode, there was a lot of great stuff that can be discussed within really like going into detail about caching and SSR and stuff like that. So I don't know, maybe we could do something interesting there uh, in a future episode too. Uh, well, uh, currently I'm really, uh, I re I'm really focused on uh, explaining for the community their routing stuff. Mm -hmm. And this is mm -hmm. uh, an episode with uh, this subject would be, would be really useful. However, I think it would be a great idea to also to explain people caching more in details, you know. Uh, I mean, yeah. caching yeah. in Vistor Front 1 app. Because mm -hmm. uh, Vistor Front Next is something which will be, not is. So, right, so, right. so I do not want to talk many about it because so, some things might change uh, in the meantime. So I do not want us to, uh, you know, uh, recording episode about caching in Vistor Front Next and then uh, mm -hmm. some a API changes, changes and, you changes, know, yeah. exactly. Totally, so let, totally. Let, let, let's talk about Vistor Front 1. Agreed, totally. All right, well... Thank you, Philip, for joining me on this episode of the Mobile UX Podcast. Unfortunately, we couldn't have Ashwarya with us today, but hopefully in the next episode of Record, he'll be back with us. Thanks a lot for inviting me. Uh, it was Absolutely. a pleasure to Absolutely. be here.